Rockfest. So you guys ready to do this shit one more fucking time or what? Yeah, make some noise for Brian Redband, everybody. Hi, this is Kill Tony. The number one live podcast in the world. Nine and a half fucking years old, me and this old bundle of bricks have been doing this. <laughs> How we doing tonight? You guys here for this shit? Put your phones away, it's a podcast, you idiots. Just enjoy it, you fucking pang dang ass motherfuckers. Stop trying to get your own viral clip. The whole thing's on the internet right now. You can just watch it later, you fucking buffoons. How we doing? We ready for this shit? This is Kill Tony, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, Austin's best fucking strip clubs. If you ever make it to Austin, you know where to go. And you know what to drink, Deep Eddy Vodka. Austin's own unbelievable vodka brand, fucking delicious. We drink it out of water bottles all the time, straight up. And Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, uh, the best fucking uh, whiskey and peanut butter product on planet Earth. All amazing sponsors of Kill Tony. Here's the rest of the sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. You might not know this, but when I'm not being the host of the number one live podcast in the world, what I've been doing for the last 16 years is being a professional stand-up comedian, and I'm excited to say that I'm back out on tour again. December 9th and 10th, I'll be performing in Arlington, Texas. January 13th and 14th of 2023, I'm in Dallas, Texas. And February 9th and 10th of 2023, I'm in Houston, Texas. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. All these shows sell out, so don't be a doofus. Go to the website now. Get tickets while you still can. Hey, y'all. We do so much in our daily regimens to take care of ourselves and try to stay healthy. We eat nutritious breakfast. Maybe you go, you work out, your hair care, skin care products. But what's really important is taking care of the insides, like daily hydration. Cooler weather makes it easy to miss the signs of dehydration, like overheating or perspiration, which means it's even more important to keep your body hydrated. Liquid IV is the greatest product on planet Earth. We use it every single day, and it fuels your well-being with easy ways to stay hydrated. In just one stick, you're getting five essential vitamins and hydrating two times faster than with water alone, and I can tell you, people, it works. Whether you're prepping for the day or taking a long-haul flight on vacation, Liquid IV is an essential addition to your routine. I know it's an essential addition to my routine, and I know that it is an essential addition to the routine of Red Band. That's right. I use it almost two times, three times a day. At night, when I wake up in the morning, I love Liquid IV. It has this convenient package, too, that I always keep one in my pocket, so if I'm out and about, I can always grab a bottled water, put it right in there, and next thing you know, I have a delicious Liquid IV. And they have awesome flavors. My favorite are Concord Grape. I love the Tropical Punch and the Passion Fruit. Mm. Mm, yummy. What? Uh -huh. If you like pina colada, they have that too. They sure do. And one stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Has a That's bunch right. of vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. Bingo. With three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, and it's made with premium ingredients. It's non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Yum. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code Tony at checkout. That's 15% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code Tony at liquidiv.com. You guys ready to start tonight's episode? I'm telling I think you guys can do a little bit better than that. Are you guys ready to start this shit or what? Ladies and gentlemen, as with standing tradition of the brotherly love between Kill Tony and Skankfest, every single one of these festivals we do this, it's always a blast. Our guests for this show, your very own Legion of Skanks, everybody. Who is Jay Gomez? Big Jay Okerson! And the future president of the United States of America, Dave Smith. Yeah. Here we go again. The rattlesnake pouring with 
must be directly into the mouths of already dehydrated people. <laughs> Fucking welcome, guys. Here we go again. A beautiful solar eclipse that is a Kill Tony meets the Legion of Skanks. <laughs> It's been a, it really has been years and years and years of us both claiming to be the best live podcast in the world. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Except one of us has an audience bigger than 12. <laughs> hey guys, are you an audience bigger than 12? What do we think? Yeah, Tony, more hey, like 1,200. Hey, hey, hey guys, you're at my podcast right now. <laughs> hey guys, hey, you're on? at fucking Skankfest. Yeah, you know we, what, we Tony? We sell out theaters all around the world. Well, listen, Tony. When we can sellotate our entire national audience into one place and sell it under your banner, we can do what you do every week, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, oh man, no I love it. The Eagles are 6-0. <laughs> all right, we'll call it a tie. <laughs> I fucking yeah. love it. Let the chaos ensue. You guys know how it works. We've all done this many times before. This bucket, believe it or not, is absolutely filled with people's names. If I pull them out, they get a chance to do 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry Fremont Street Bear. twist on this, because I fucking always forget what Skankfest is like. All the other podcasts, they like it when you heckle and chant and shit. But here, when the comedians, when the people that had the courage to sign up for 60 Seconds Uninterrupted are up there, don't fucking heckle. Don't try to be funny from the crowd. That's every other show you can fucking do that shit. This one, let them die the slow death that they signed up for. Okay? Don't help them. Don't give them fucking anything. Let them fucking just fucking fade away into the dark. And then we're, we'll be there, we'll be there less than 60 seconds later to say things better than you were going to yell. <laughs> you guys ready to start this fucking thing or what? Well, I could very easily reach into the bucket right now and pull out one of the names of the many, many people that signed up for a chance to do this. Or we could start with some fucking momentum. Guaranteed, we could start with a guy that kicks off every single episode of this show with a brand new minute every single fucking week. I just did 10 fucking sold out shows with this guy. We got on a plane together in Boston, Massachusetts today to be here with you. This is a brand new minute. Sing it if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. What's up, Skankfest? How you guys doing? I just flew in from Boston. It's hard to respect Boston because they're too proud of the Revolutionary War. I'm not impressed by any war that I can defeat the army of with a trip to Home Depot. Okay. I could defeat the Revolutionary Army War <laughs> with uh, fertilizer and $5 Mexicans. But uh, good to be here at Skank Fest. You know, this has been one of the best Skank Fests I've been to. Maybe next year we can get working elevator escalators and some higher ceilings would be nice. But uh, something about me that you might not know is I'm pretty good at sex. Um, I'm really good at dirty talking. Uh, sometimes when I'm fucking a bitch. Uh, I'll be like, you know, I see a lot of myself in you right now. About three inches. Thank you. Boom. The pro up here knows exactly when a minute is. Hans Kim, this is the first time you guys have seen Hans in a little while, right? Yeah, first of all, I want to say great job, Joe Wrist. <laughs> Thank you. I do write excellent jokes. 
Uh, you guys uh, know the great Hans Kim, Dave? You just saw it live in the flesh. There he is. Yeah, I mean, I saw him like three weeks ago doing like a full <laughs> set, but that was uh, that was great. And uh, you. you know, we're working on the escalators, asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, dude, they work for the first two days before you guys decide to show up on the last day. You should have you know seen electronics. Them. Go fix them. <laughs> <laughs> We bought them on the cheap from your country. <laughs> Get your toolbox, fucking geek squad. <laughs> it's true. You never insult a man's escalator. <laughs> you don't come for a man's escalator. There are lines. <laughs> so, uh, Hans Kim, you did it again. What else? Give us something we don't know about you. Give us fucking an interview thing that uh, uh, we've talked a lot about everything. What the else last we week, about? I've been uh, sleeping with William Montgomery, the great William Montgomery. Uh, his night terrors have been keeping me up at night. Uh, he keeps calling me Charlie. And then, uh, it is amazing. So, like, part of the part of the problem with. Well, I mean, it's a logistics issue. There wasn't uh, any more rooms left in the hotel that uh, I was booked at, and Hans joined this last week's tour late. Look at Tony getting called out for being cheap and not getting them in their own rooms, <laughs> yeah. and how much he's I stuttering would. through the reason why. You see, they were booked up, and uh, they didn't have anything on Expedia. Uh, yeah, cu -cu -cu uh, <laughs> now, you see, what the, the way the reservation system works... <laughs> Uh, typically, my openers get a mansion, but in this case, no, 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 no. When you, well, you know, the Vegas is a different story. It is true, uh, but it is incredible, and I have watched these two argue all week about their own little pet peeves with one another. It's amazing. William's like, "Yeah, he wears the shower slides all the time," <laughs> and Hans He's, uh... thinking about night terrors. Did he scream anything in particular? Or... Yeah, he screamed about fucking his cousin or something. It was kind of <laughs> weird, but uh, he kept farting on me and calling it Agent Orange. Hans, what do you think your parents would say if uh, they saw what you're doing here tonight? They'd be like, wow, you really know how to talk to white people. <laughs> do your Korean parents talk with white people often? What's their deal with whites? As uh, seldom as possible. They're very proud Korean people, and they don't like stuttering and stammering, so they just avoid the whites. Oh. Then whose laundry do they do? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> All right, Hans. Well, we fucking we've been through it together. I've seen enough of your ass this week. Another good rock solid new minute. Thanks for getting the show started. Hans Kim. Thank you guys. There he goes. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. You guys ready to go to this fucking bucket or what? Yeah. Yeah, no more funny business. Make some noise for your first comedian. Could be a fucking handicapped guy. Could be a first time comic. Could be a local legend. Here to flex. Anything can happen. No interrupting. This is 60 seconds from Josh Shapiro. Getting the show started from the bucket. Not an easy position to be in at all. Hans makes it look very easy. Josh Shapiro. Here he comes, everybody. Make some noise for Josh. Skate Fest! I made it from fucking Canada, baby. Let's go, dude. Dude, I'm so excited to eat American fast food. We don't have anything, dude. I have never tried the Popeye spicy chicken sandwich. That shit was sold out for months. Someone got stabbed over that sandwich. That means that this sandwich is so good that some guy pulled out a knife and was like, hey, give me that sandwich or I'm gonna stab you. And the guy with the sandwich was like, no. <laughs> There's no other way that guy gets stabbed, dude. <laughs> I'm 25 years old, I feel like I look like I'm 35. 
But like, I should have known that this was my life because I had a full beard at 15. I went bald at 16. I had a full bush at eight years old. Do you know what it's like to be an eight-year-old boy, take off your pants and have the pedophile be like, ew, what the fuck? What are you looking at me like that for? I thought that was the fucking bear, dude. That was the bear. It was the bear. Okay. It's normally louder, but Red Band sucks at his job. <laughs> He's been doing it for nine and a half years. <laughs> after hundreds and hundreds. But you're right. It was the bear. Uh, how about one more hand for Josh Shapiro, everybody? Very, very interesting. I've never seen a fat Dagestani guy before. <laughs> it's like Kabob Nurmagomedov or something like that. Uh, Josh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Almost four years. Four years. Where at? Montreal. Montreal. Wow. You really are excited to Do you do it in food. French also? Fuck no, dude. <laughs> I don't make any fucking money because I won't do it in French, dude. Yeah, aren't they like booting people out who aren't going to do stuff in French now? Yeah. That's Isn't, hilarious. That's, that's... English is illegal in Montreal now. What do you mean? They just created a new bill. Yeah. That makes English illegal. Wow. I don't believe you. It's true. No, he's not whatever, wrong. Whatever your interpretation of this bill is, I'm telling Look, you, dude, you fucking read it wrong. He's definitely boiling it down the brass tacks, but... It's not bad. I promise you it's not bad. I don't know anything about Montreal news. I fucking... I would put my child's life on it then. It's not illegal to speak English. Lewis is, uh, for the record, he's been gambling his child a lot since we've been in Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, dude, the Cirque that has the biggest sports book in the world. I put my son's life on the line. All right. What happens if you, what happens if you fucking speak uh, English in Canada? What do they do? Give you a fourth booster shot or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Mainly it's for businesses. If you own a business, you cannot have anything in English. Your own personal computer, you'll get fucking fined like 2K for that shit. I also don't believe you. No, he's right. That's the right thing. That's the real thing. Nah, I think you're telling the truth. They, uh, they hate freedom. Um... <laughs> No, it is. They don't hate freedom. They hate America so much. <laughs> they want to be French so bad and so stupid. Dude, they're 40 minutes away from New York. That? <laughs> it really is crazy. The, the first joke you told about the stabbing and the fast people, that was such a fucking great joke, dude. That is such a fucking good joke. I fucking, it was like, it was fucking perfect. But all I could focus on was these drips of sweat that were falling down. It was my fucking white claw. I no. sprinted from the back. I, I watched what happened. I couldn't figure out. The, I, yeah. I was like, where is the origin of this drip coming from? No, I watched where that. are the ice caps Dave, that it he got started excited. from? He got excited because he got cold. And right before he jumped on stage, he took a swig of his drink and but, he missed his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it mostly went, went beard. It crashed into his face and his beard was dripping. It was just dripping. And I was I, while I was watching it drip, I go, that's so well written. Where is it coming from? Where yeah. is that drip? Why is his beard so <laughs> fucking wet? <laughs> But he like miscalculated the size of the sip. He like wanted a smaller sip, but he went Gish, and just <laughs> splashed his whole face. Yeah. <laughs> so Red Band showed me the law. This is real. Your kid would be killed or whatever you bet against Damn it. him. By the way, <laughs> Fuck. father of the year well, over here. Uh... It's not the first kid Lewis has lost, and it won't be the last. <laughs> In a nonsensical bet. <laughs> uh, so you hate French people? Do you speak French? I speak French. That's what being a Canadian is like, by the way. This is the only people they have to be racist against. This is a French. <laughs> they don't have... All right. Lewis, your, your name is Josh Shapiro. That's hilarious. Listen to a Jew speak French. Yeah. Right? It's like, a penny. Je m'appelle Josh, the uh, rent is due. <laughs> you are Putin me in the oven. <laughs> banks, banks, banks. Media, media, media. Como tal Jew? How much will that holocaust me? <laughs> Jew-Canadian jokes, folks. Very rarely do you get to do Jew-Canadian jokes. <laughs> Josh, give us a fun fact about your life that we will find interesting that makes you different than other people. 
I gamble for a living. Whoa. Wow. For a living? I stream on Twitch. Or is it a problem? Casinos pay me to lose money so other people will lose money. Really? Yeah. Didn't they just ban that? They yeah, somebody, didn't know. somebody tried to get me to do that horseshit too, and I was like, this sounds shady as fuck, doggy. <laughs> yeah, they just banned it. It sounded some shady shit, dude. They didn't ban that. DraftKings signed a $13 billion deal with Twitch, so Twitch banned their competitors. Mm. Yeah. Basically. That's a pretty cool living. You should go sell underground English in Montreal. <laughs> A market's been created. <laughs> I just opened a You can only speak book. English in these speakeasies, they call them. <laughs> they go, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Oh, thank God I'm in here. These fucking fags. <laughs> All day long. <laughs> Give me a beer. Unbelievable. Montreal used to be home of the biggest comedy festival in the world, and now we're there right now. Isn't that cool? You're inside of it. It's wacky, that fucking thing. There's like big puppets with like giant heads walking in the streets, and like all the fucking French Canadians are like, oh! Kurt Metzger said it best. They love whimsical bullshit. Yeah. The French. Oh, yeah, the head is big and body is little. Hey, yes! I get it now. He's a juggler, but he's uh, not good at juggling, eh? Oh, a million laughs. Ah, oh, he's a clown. He's on stilts. It's perfect. Yeah. He go to a pick up a penny and he flip over. Ha <laughs> yeah, ha, yes! They really are fucking idiots, dude. It's they like entertainment from the 1800s. They love Jerry Lewis till he died. <laughs> Josh Shapiro, you just made your Kill Tony debut. Thank you so much for signing up. There he goes, everybody. We're going to keep it moving along. We shall keep it moving. Back to the bucket we go. Anything can happen. You guys get it? You know what show you're at? You having fun out there? Oh, sweet. Thank you. Make some noise for your next comedian, Frankie Gonzalez, everybody. Frankie Gonzalez. He's right here, look at that. Make some noise for Frankie, everybody. Oh my gosh, I've been smoking so much weed this weekend. It's fucking... I don't really smoke weed. I'm more of an edibles guy. I love them. I think they're great. I like edibles because edibles are like having an alcoholic father. You never know when that shit's going to hit you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was for you, Dad. <laughs> he, he's not dead. He's in prison, but he's like on the fourth level. So you gotta really look up. I I do I get I get high a lot, but I'm also really bad at slang. I'm terrible at it. I grew up in the ghetto. Had no idea what anybody was saying for 20 years. But so I'm really bad at slang, but also get high a lot. So for a long time, I thought cotton mouth was what happened when you ate out a black woman. <laughs> That's not what it means, though. It's I'm Frankie Gonzalez, thank you so wow. much. Wow, unbelievable. Unbelievable performance. Hey. Frankie, that was fucking fantastic. Thank you. Tell me, how uh, you doing? I'm good, thanks fucking for asking. Fucking baked, man. I'm sorry, I'm so high right now. That, that was amazing. How long I have you been doing stand-up? You're fucking fantastic. Uh, three years. Where yeah. at? Uh, San Diego, actually. Holy yeah. shit. Incredible. Uh, La Jolla misses you, by the way. Yeah, yeah you, you perform there a lot? Uh, no, they don't like me there. The store? The yeah. store? Oh, they don't know. Really? Why don't they like Maybe. you? Did you do something? Um, no, it's just, you know, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> no. No, they have some Latinos there. <laughs> How are you guys doing? You show up to an open mic with 18 of your cousins, Odalay <laughs> your way through everything. They're all, they're, all, they're, all, they're all aggressive, like, put him on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this guy not my cousin? 
Hey, Pepito, put down my Pepito. <laughs> you are not him. This fucking club is racist, Holmes. Oh, man. White guy, white guy, white guy. <laughs> put him up now. The edibles are just starting to kick in. <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> this this whole crowd looks like they're really good at drawing swastikas, so I'm like fucking scared as shit right now. Please Dude, don't. Who's bad at drawing a swastika? It's the most fun shape to draw. It is true. Who's ever been like, you, you draw a swastika? They go, I'm actually not good at it. <laughs> no, there's like an aesthetically nice feeling to drawing. It's a one, like, you know, it's perfect. I mean, it's a good, wherever your politics are, if you're trying to draw a swastika, <laughs> you can draw a swastika. Yeah. Yeah, who's like, you're, you're a racist liar if you're going, I don't know, is this like, is this the right direction even? I don't know. So it's like straight turnout, straight, to, I don't even get it. I don't know. I don't know, I wasn't alive in World War II. I don't know. And it's not a white guy thing to draw a swastika, by the way. I'm sure that if you took a spray can and you went up to the side of a building at night, you could probably do a swastika too. You, you never spray painted a swastika to get the skinheads in trouble with a rival gang or something? Sometimes Look, I my, get... my grandma put all the tamales in the shape of a swastika. Racist tamales! <laughs> tamales! It's a soul sticker! <laughs> What do you do for work, Frankie? I, I'm a doorman for a comedy club. So. <laughs> a yeah. different comedy club? Uh, American Comedy Company. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. yeah that's why the, yeah. their rival club won't work you. Yeah, yeah, I think that's part of it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I do what I can, you know, you work, like, you stop, work, you know. I do that. You work at the American Comedy Club or yeah. the illegal American Comedy Club? <laughs> <laughs> the almost American Comedy Company. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on in. Come I was an anchor, baby. I'm, I'm all right with it. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of anchors on the Bay of San Diego. No <laughs> doubt about it. Dude, I'm there fucking New Year's Eve weekend, dude. Come do some yeah, time. Yeah, no, bro. I am. I'm working that. Do shit. some time, bro. Go Oh, really? Oh, no. yeah. All right. I'm telling the camera. That's. Fuck yeah. You said it up. He's saying go to jail. Oh, shit. Oh. Do a little time. Come back with some stories, man. I'm not. <laughs> Bro, that's fucking awesome, dude. Big J's gonna put you up on his New Year's Eve show. I'll just tell you, he'll give you a few minutes. If you can make it over to the comedy store, me and Lewis will give you an hour and a half. An hour New well, Year's Eve show. Comedy store. We don't give a everything shit. You, we do, everything you, you agree to not go there. Honest to God, I'll feature for you the entire weekend in an American comedy show. I'll just do 25 in the middle. That's Jay's offer. I'm out. Uh, <laughs> that's the best you're gonna do. To, uh, take like his, take I'll his, take his offer. I'll take it. Frankie, for three years, I find that to be an incredible minute. You have any other special skills or talents? Are you good at anything else? Any hobbies or anything like that? Uh, I used to do like graffiti for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking nailed that, by the way. I nailed that four minutes ago. Nobody gave it any credit. Unfucking believable. Yeah, yeah, I could do some pretty good tricks with a switchblade comb. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the melanin. I don't know what to tell you. I used to fuck around with nunchucks a little bit. You're a fucking stereotype master. Yeah. yeah. What else? What do you think is the most Mexican thing about you? Oh shit! All right, hang on. Whoa. Other than I'm that answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, like, pretty oh, much my tortilla balls. <laughs> I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> so, I call soccer football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, uh, my sister's dating a white man. That's probably the most Mexican thing. Oh, shit. Me. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, you... everybody gets to stay in the country. <laughs> Where'd she meet this white guy? I what? She gets sent on a jet to Martha's Vineyard? How did that happen? Yeah. Frankie, what's your love life like? You got a girl? Oh shit. Uh, it's complicated, and this is gonna be everywhere, is right? Is she dead right now? No. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's a Jewish and an Italian one, so I'm in the middle right now. I don't know where the fuck. Oh, I'm there's going. two girls. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're an idiot. You didn't have to say that. Oh, he said, "Are you dating anyone?" He's like, "Yes, I am. She's beautiful." That girl is great with her hair. I love her hair and eyes. Instead, you're doing callbacks to World War II uh, over here. Yeah. Like one's an axis and one's a fucking. I didn't want to answer. I didn't want to in the beginning. Yeah. You convinced me. It's I just, know. Yeah, that's just it's it the magic. Out. Yeah. Oh, hey. Whoa. It's between a Jew and an Italian. What was that? A Jewish girl and an Italian girl. You said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one you like more? I'll, they they both scream at me. I really like it. Say it right now. Look at the camera. I'm yeah, I'm Tony. No, I really there. can't. Dump, yeah. dump one Frankie, of those bitches right, right now. Frankie, that yeah. camera over there. Oh, right no. there. Right there. I what? think dump, in my opinion, dump the Christ killer. <laughs> what? The Christ killer. Get rid of her. Oh, oh shit. I can't, though. I really like both of them. Can we not? Let me. Can I propose a third option? What's the third option? Ask him to be in a throuple. What if, what if all three of us just had a good time? Wow. I mean, just incredible. Well, you can bring I'm... your Jewish bullshit, and you can cook Italian stuff, and I can do whatever. <laughs> This guy just dropped the matzo Fuck ball yeah, and the meatball at the same time. <laughs> Fucking incredible. What's up? Frankie, congratulations. That was an unbelievable set. I do believe you're opening up. Did Big J say your name? Yeah. Did you say that? Did, or were you fucking with him? No, I swear to God, yeah. Oh, you're opening yeah. up for Big J Oakerson at Shit, New Year's yeah. Eve, right? Why? Wow. Fucking amazing. There he goes, Frankie Gonzalez, everybody. God. All right. Kim kill, Condon, kill. Jason Ellis on that weekend. It's gonna be a fun one. Fucking kill Tony is magical. Isn't it? Fun? That guy just got a fucking featuring spot on New Year's Eve we for Jay Ogerson. We live That's incredible. All right, let's throw it down. It's already that a feature. guy just got a headlining spot on Jay's <laughs> New Year's Eve show. All the money at the door, 100 percent, off that minute. We love fucking starting careers, building careers, helping out any way we can. And when we see somebody that fucking makes us laugh, we like to push them. So right now we're going to do something special. We've always had regulars on the show that write and perform a new minute every single week. We have an old class of fucking regulars. Some of them are here tonight and they have full flourishing fucking careers right now. And they used to be complete unknowns, writing a new minute every single week here. This is one of them right now. She hasn't been on the show in years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brand new minute from the great and powerful Kim Condon, everybody. Stop, I only have a minute. Um, God, I'm so nervous. I don't do that much stand-up, and I'm a virgin. Um, <laughs> you guys, I did some shopping today. Uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, I went and bought some clothes at Forever 21, which is sad at 32. Uh, it doesn't feel good. Fast fashion is not good. It's a fucking horrible idea. Don't do it. The clothes aren't good. I bought a pair of boots. I tried to wear them here. It was a bad idea. My feet had blood all over them. They were like $3. Blood all over my feet. I'm serious. It wasn't my blood. It was the kid who made them. Um, he's forever seven. Uh, <laughs> Dog, I swear, I love those sweatshop kids. I keep getting older and they stay the same age. Uh, uh, those are the real red bottoms. Uh, I can't stand a bitch that's scared of birds. Ugh. If you're in here and you feel like, you're like, oh, that's me, I'm scared of birds, no one likes you. <laughs> At the end of the night when your friends are done hanging out, they just keep hanging out without you. you know? Even worse than a bitch that's scared of birds is a bitch that's scared of clowns. So annoying, right? If you're scared of clowns, and I mean this, get raped. <laughs> Have a real problem. <laughs> Unless you got raped by a clown, then I'm so sorry. Uh, if you got raped by a bird, bitch, hit the gym. 
That's one rape we can all laugh at. Thank you guys so much. I'm Kim Kong Wow, so cool. What's amazing about Kim is that I literally know when you started stand-up comedy, I was it was on the fucking second or first episode ever. I think the second episode ever of Kill Tony. It was the second Monday we ever did it. Mm -hmm. And you had just performed in the original room. Yep. Your cousin was working around the comedy scene at the time, and we all kind of knew you. And it's fucking amazing. Your it's husband? My nine, cousin. Nine oh, I thought her husband. You were married? You never told me that? <laughs> That's crazy. Now you did something wrong. <laughs> we're even. Yeah. Lewis 73, Kim won. <laughs> And here we are, nine and a half years later, fucking incredible. Ten and a half. Really? Isn't that crazy? Almost 11 years I think years you ago. lost count because the podcast isn't ten years old yet. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's cool. I don't want to blow your cover. It's cool. <laughs> if that's what has you getting spots in New York or whatever you're telling them, fuck it. Dog, it feels like 30. I know, right? You hear my voice? <laughs> you came up, you fucking uh, took your time, you fucking grabbed every in the audience's attention like the audience grabs your pussy sometimes uh, how's that going? but not I mean, here just... that happened at a regular show at Skankfest for the record no one has grabbed Kim's pussy so let's just put that away <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on, hold on I don't think you caught my tone what the fuck is wrong with you guys that you're losing to these normie crowds yeah. who grab Kim's pussy all you do is get hit they, yeah, Dave was trying to dog whistle you guys. He was like, no one has grab Kim's pussy. <laughs> yeah, it sucks because I feel like if I do jujitsu on any these guys, like put them in a chokehold for touching me, they're just going to come. Totally, for sure. Like, oh, I felt the warm wet on my neck. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Kim's voice is gone. It's like you're just like, you're still you're like, like <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, dude, we're all fucked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the thing is, you got through the jokes fine, but it was yeah. like your voice had a minute left in it. Yeah. All right. I just got here today. What have I missed? What were some highlights for you so far this festival? Oh, man, it's been so fun. I fucking... I've done a bunch of shows. I did a blind show, a blindfolded show. Oh, that shit. shit was sick. Who was there? That shit was so cool. I'm telling you right now, if you were at that show, you, you had a mask on, the comics couldn't see, the audience couldn't see... I was on acid, and it was like... I yeah, they wish they couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, dude. You took a gun in your ass today. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I think Kim pegged you a little bit in this fucking relationship. I love seeing you two together. It's fucking amazing. Two Puerto Ricans with no children. It is absolutely incredible. It's fucking amazing. You guys are working. You guys really did defy the odds. <laughs> I love it. Kim, what else? Tell us more about life. What are you up to nowadays? You oh. started, I mean, it's crazy. You literally had, to think of how we do it now with Hans, who's an eight-year veteran that nobody knew about fucking a year ago. William, an eight-year veteran that nobody knew about fucking five years ago. All these guys... They all are like pros. To think that you started fucking writing a new minute every week from the get is insane. Tell us more about what you're up to yeah, now. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, I feel like I haven't said this a lot, but huge props to Tony and Red Band. They put on so many fucking comics. Um, yeah. Going on the Kill Tony show, I got to go on the road with the coolest people, Rogan, Ralphie May, yeah. Bobby Lee. It's really um, falling off quickly. <laughs> Yeah. Bobby Lee's gonna die next, Rogan, I guess. Rob uh -huh. Bay, Bobby Lee, Rob Figs. Uh, <laughs> Kim was like two people away from going Denny's. <laughs> uh. um, but yeah, I've just been doing stand up, some writing, a little bit of acting. I'm doing a, you know, a bunch of, It sounds douchey when I start listing it, so. Writer. Um, Impractical Jokers, right? Yeah. Absolutely yeah. incredible. We're so proud of the amazing Thank work you. that you've done. It's amazing to Thank see you come you. up here and crush for a couple Thank minutes. You. How about one more time for the great Kim Condon, everybody? Kim I love you! One of the legends of the show. Come I'll on, guys, you. you can do better than that. That's the great Kim Condon. I know you guys have seen her all weekend, but... I think, uh...
from them being regulars in the show, I think Kim and uh, Ali Makovsky I was turned on to from doing this show with you, and they're, I love them both. They're oh, both yeah. beasts, yeah. So oh, good. It's incredible. They're Who was here last year when Kim beat the shit out of Ali Makovsky? <laughs> oh, yeah. <Guys. laughs> That's incredible. I can't believe you would put a Puerto Rican up against a sweet white girl like Ali Makovsky. That is just Yeah, it's just supposed to be in a fight. I pulled a name out of the bucket. Anything can happen. This is all improvised. Don't heckle. 60 seconds uninterrupted goes to Alec Phillips, everybody. Here we go. Alec Phillips. We're moving along smoothly. Here he is. Come on, make some noise for Alec, everybody. How's it going, guys? So there's a couple people here in wheelchairs tonight. I wish I had a seat in the Yoke Kratom Theater. <laughs> so, uh, they recently caught a man in Texas with 58 terabytes of child porn. Let that settle in. There is a thousand gigabytes in a terabyte. We sent a man to the moon with one gigabyte. They didn't catch him after, like, the first two terabytes? <laughs> no, I did the math on it. 58 terabytes is the equivalent of 14,500 feature-length films. Were you done? Was that it? Was that it? That's it. Okay, you nailed it. Fucking incredible. Absolutely amazing. And I, Alec, with a lot of film knowledge, just killed a bunch of innocent people. <laughs> Who would have guessed? I felt like that wasn't over, and he was trying to teach people how to store child porn on your computer. That's 130 like, feature-length film. Now, Why here's, here's how you beat the system. Anyways, I got a couple uh, hard drives for sale outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Put the baby away. Get the baby out of here. Alec Phillips, welcome to the show. Where are you from? Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon, a place where suicide is currently legal. I'm surprised you haven't taken advantage of that yet. Uh, Portland, Oregon has a bunch of new laws. You can kill yourself, you can do any drug, pretty much, right? Any drug. So, what are you doing? What are you up to? Hot dogs and bologna? What's going on over there? Yeah. That's about it. You do any drugs ever? No. What do you do for fun? drink yeah what do you do for work uh i'm a correctional officer whoa Shut up, dude. This hell yeah hoity toity over here Oops. look at the ex-cons yeah. booing him and exactly. the other. oh we he's enemy class we don't fucking like correctional officers around here you ever abuse your power bro that's a fucking yes did you see that pause holy shit Oh my god. What's the worst thing you've ever done? Tell the truth. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. You just say it, dude. Just let it out. We're all friends here, please. What's the worst thing you've ever done as a correctional officer? Go, go. You got your dick sucked by an inmate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Dude, I would, I... Yeah. Some of that fucking Portland, Oregon. You know what I'm saying? Man. Some of that fucking... There's no more cops there. It's fine. <laughs> I am enjoying watching the seven stories rolling through your head. <laughs> of which you're trying to pick the worst. Yeah, I mean, if you ask me the worst thing I've ever done, you're not hearing it. Yeah. He's like, let me tell one where I didn't finish. I don't think we're going to get a straight answer out of him, so I'm going to change the question. What's the worst thing you've ever seen uh, prisoners do? What have you ever caught them doing? Where you're like, Jesus fucking Christ, guys. <laughs> well, we had about a, like, six foot five trans woman. Oh, yeah. Beat the shit out of, like, a five foot regular woman. <laughs> Wow. I and he's like, and I came to that. Yeah. I am hard as a rock right now, no doubt about it. You gotta run in. 
Is it hard to make, uh, when you're holding a nightstick, is it hard to make uh, quotation marks? Ladies, please. <laughs> Guys, ladies, stop. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever abuse an inmate physically or beat the fucking shit out of somebody? It's like spitting your face and shit. That's what I would do. I'd fuck them up, dude. They tried. And you, you like beat them. You right? Do you like a fucking war? You fucking destroyed them, right? I'm trying to get them to do a better crime right now. You went yeah, way listen, too far, right? Dude, it's pretty fucked up if you beat up a woman. But if you beat up a woman. <laughs> We could all get past that. <laughs> so you're... I think we're get, finding out now that you are a corrections officer at a strictly women's prison. Is that correct? No. No. You have both. Co-ed? Are they all mixed together? Might as well be now. Why? What do you, what do you mean? Oh, Look at this guy making you. it political. I got you. I'm trying to figure it out, though. Guys or girls, girls or guys, I don't know. They're all in there. They're animals. I mean, let me ask you something. So this trans woman that is in the women's prison, she was once a man. Yes. And now she says that she's a woman, even though she might be a woman. She's saying that she's a woman. And so they let her into the women's prison with a penis still, you think? It's into a different dorm. So there's like different, there's a different floor for females. So they just go, like, up a floor. Okay, hold on a second. Nice. So there's a floor with guys. A lot of them. And then there's a floor with women. One of them. And then there's a floor with strictly transgender people? No. They put they them go, in the, they put them they in the ceiling to, tiles. They lay them down. The, the trans men they're go they're to eating. the women's pod. Dude, what a great idea. I can't if I ever go to jail, I'm just going to say I'm a girl before I go in. Am I the only I'm going to jerk off so much. Yeah, dude, I'm going to literally just go in, I'm going to beat the shit out of everybody, become queen of the fucking quad. <laughs> I'm a go goddess. <laughs> Suck my pussy dick. <laughs> Bring me your frito lays. I'm still trying to understand this, though. I'm me still too. a minute's in. I got you, but try to describe it a little bit better for us. Floors of guys, one floor of women. Where are the transgender people exactly? Wherever they say that the gender that they identify as? Yes. Okay. Do they have to have like long hair and a dress? Or they can just, no. I, I can walk in like, dude, I'm a chick. Yes. I, nice, dude. That I rules. To get arrested. By the way, what if, this like, is what I've been fishing for for seven and a half minutes. Dude, 60 days in me there. If they, could you just like... Could you just be a, a dude prisoner and go, I identify as free. <laughs> and just leave free prison? Free like, could you just leave? I mean, I would just go in and I would fucking pick the smallest woman and I would make her my bitch. <laughs> Start fucking scissoring with her, let's go. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? You just say you identify as the other thing, bring your own bar of soap, and just throw it in the shower. And just that's it. hope everybody goes and gets it at once. Do they ever start just dicking down the actual chicks? Not that we can see, but yeah, it happens. Yeah, Gosh. that's what they're doing when you're not around, by the way. They're I mean, is there any negative side to it? Is there a reason that I would not say that I'm a woman? Why wouldn't I say I'm a woman? No, you. that's a good idea. <laughs> This is fucking unbelievable. There's going to be literally hundreds of sex addicts that are hearing this, thinking it sounds like I'm a fucking to, awesome idea. I'm gonna go to Oregon and commit a crazy crime, <laughs> and I'm going to fuck and be fed for the rest of my life. Yeah, dude, being in a women's prison is better than being in regular life. Hell oh, yeah, dude! Nonstop pussy and protein loaf. <laughs> Poor Jack, and we get a college degree. Oh, dude. Portland's fucking... It's a studying law. No, stop. Come on, girls. Let's go to book club. <laughs> You've got to love it. A liberal city like Portland. This is actually a shot of its future right here that uh, we're zooming in on right now. <laughs> I thought it was live. It is a crazy dumpster fire. Were you there? I mean, obviously you were there during all the riots and everything. Yeah. Craziest thing you saw around your neighborhood when that was all going down. Um, I don't live in Portland. I live right above Portland in Vancouver, Washington. With an AR-15 on the roof. Guys, you don't live in Portland. You live right above it where the trans are. <laughs> like one floor. <laughs> I'm 
some of the trans floor of porn. Does anybody have a really good joint or blunt? Not the horse shit that people have been giving me all day. Yeah. Some fire ass shit. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Please. we got it. Right. Lewis. Yep. Yeah. My, no, no, my, the my guy's got but it right here you. with the fucking. You got some fire shit? Yeah. How about a hand for the great Yoni, everybody? Uh, that's a garbage joint. Yeah, and can I get another one of these oh, okay. from one of our fucking oh, staff a, people? That's a real one. Whoa, dude. This looks like my dick. Um, Celebration one, dude. Alec Phillips, thank you so much. Very interesting interview. Thanks for sharing the insights of your job working at a prison in Oregon thank in you. the year 2022. I mean, I, I that shit is so fucking wild. Thank you for sharing it. Great minute. There he goes, Alec Phillips, everybody. Here. Thank you, guys. Alec, take one of these. Catch. That's a joke book by the great Bonesai. Good catch, my friend. Look at you. That's the guy that knows how to stop flying meat when it's coming at him right there. First time ever on stage, you said. Ever. So that makes really? How about one that more time really for him? There he goes, good. Alec Phillips. Up here, living the dream. What do you think? Yeah, we could do it. We should fucking do it. We have hey, another Can somebody one. get Dave Smith another beer, please? Oh, dude, you don't have to. <laughs> oh, I was going to say It's that. a wild-ass looking beer. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, we have another one of our fucking graduated regulars here. Uh, this young lady actually took over for Kim Congdon when uh, she was retired into uh, Kill Tony folklore. She is a fully formed, fucking absolutely touring, working, continuously fucking comedian. She used to write and perform a brand new minute every single week on this show. She started, she's the only person to ever become a regular before she was even 21. We made her a regular, and then they stopped letting people perform under 21 at the comedy store. She would wait outside. She would grab a stool from the comedy store front patio, put it on the other side of the fucking standing bar and she would sit there all night, talk with comedians, learn about the art form. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for one of the greats. This is a new minute. It's been years since we've seen her perform. Make some noise for the great Allie McCoskey. Thanks, us. How are you guys? Good to be here. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I'm sorry if I sound weird. I have fat parents, which does affect my speaking voice. It does. I didn't think it did, but when I started doing comedy, a lot of people told me that I had a weird voice, and I do. I sound like I'm doing guided meditation for heroin addicts. And so I tried to figure out why my voice sounds like this, and I thought about it, and I realized that during my formative years of learning how to speak, my parents always had their mouths full. So now I just have, like, a mashed potato accent. I just sound like I'm always chewing through something. I have loser parents. My parents are losers. My dad's name is Larry. My mom's an alcoholic. Um, they're big losers. My dad does loser things. Like my dad, he smokes five cigars a day. That's an insane amount of cigars. One cigar takes at least an hour to smoke. My dad is smoking five hours worth of cigars a day. One cigar, eight inches long. My dad is smoking 40 inches of cigar a day. My dad is smoking the length of a modest couch in cigar. That is all. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. I love it. All the kids are all grown up, Red Band. Can you yeah. believe it? Look at that. We knew her when she was just a little baby. Yeah. How's it going? Things are good. Skankfest has been a blast. Oh, I've been yeah. having so much fun. It's the best. It's literally the best. Yeah, it's been it's Seeing been everybody, so these guys make the best fucking lineups. It's so cool. It's all one big crazy-ass family. It's like a big family reunion every yeah, fucking time. Every year. Incredible. Allie, uh, what the fuck's up? Not much. I'm about to do a bunch of shows, go on the road. Um, Where can people get tickets? AllieMukovsky.com slash shows. Wow, okay. <laughs> Perfect, absolutely. Very efficient. www. by the way. That's HTTP hyper colon 
<laughs> A L I M A C O F S K Y dot com slash shows. Absolutely. And uh, tell us about your life since the last time we saw you. What else has been going on? Been- Life's been good. I got a boyfriend. I got one of those. Ooh. Yeah. It's okay. He's not here. Ooh, fuck He's not guy. here. He's not? He's not here, so. Well- Wow. Is he a comic or a civilian? No, he's a re- he's regular. He's regular vibes. That means all you have a chance. <laughs> if things don't work out, hit up my DMs at not Ali Mac. N O T A L I M A C. I, I read them all. Hell yeah. A lot of these comics are like, I don't read my DMs. I'm like, I watch you before you go on stage. <laughs> You're reading the DMs. Absolutely, Chris D'Elia for sure. <laughs> Uh, Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly reads his DMs. (laughs) I love it. Allie fucking Makovsky. Thanks Uh, for having me back. Of course. You've been doing it. Your podcast is... It's on a little hiatus. I'm working on something new, so just stay Uh tuned. Oh, somebody's fucking ready for showbiz, huh? Are they going to make you the new Ellen or something like that? I would love to be the new Ellen. Oh, my God. I I want to abuse people. Yeah. I want to be at that level in my career where I can abuse people, and people are like, well, I get it. I get it. I think it's so funny, like, when you see a comic put their podcast on hiatus... It's either because they're working on something like incredible, like for industry, yeah. or it's because they fucking relapsed on drugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there Got is to do no, it last Wednesday. <laughs> there is no in between. But you probably can't talk about it, right? It's some major development deal or something. H- no, HBO. I can't talk about it, but it's not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's not that exciting, and that's why she put her podcast on hiatus. <laughs> yeah. It's how little you care about your podcast. What does this boyfriend of yours do for a living? Um, oh, I've, got, I've corrupted him. I got him into the podcast biz. What? Yeah. So yeah. he has his own podcast? No, 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 no. He's doing like engineering, editing. He's behind the scenes. Oh, so he's broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're fucking your slave. <laughs> yeah. Putting him to work. Come There's got to be benefit for me. <laughs> yeah. I love it. What was he doing before he met you, before you got him into the podcast biz? Uh, he was doing app development, coding, all of that stuff. All right. Yeah. All right. Coding? Coding. He was in coding. Coding. <laughs> a shitty muscle or a pain pill, right? Coding. It's the worst one. You ever been given coding? You're like, dude, what the fuck is this? It's like a time. Well, it's not bad. But whenever you get it, it's the why you don't like it is because you thought you were getting Viking in a Percocet. <laughs> I think I'm going to give you time all with Cody and you go, what are you, mad at me? <laughs> what, have you heard things? I hurt more now. <laughs> Allie, this is, you live by yourself? With her, with, you live with him? No, I live alone. Okay. Um, I might be moving in with him, you know, to cut the costs. Right. Trying right. to keep some money in the pocket. Um, but I might be moving to New York. Okay, whoa, whoa. look at that. That's a big announcement, a Kill Tony exclusive. (laughs) Absolutely incredible. He'll move with you, right? He'll move with you? Yeah, he'll move with me. What a bitch. I know, it rocks. (laughs) Fuck yeah. It's the best. Lap dog, dude, you got a lap dog. You have to. But right now, you've been living by yourself. A question I've been asking people lately is, what's the weirdest thing? What would stand out to us if we opened your refrigerator right now? What's the weirdest thing in your oh, okay. refrigerator? Okay, um, I have baby food. Oh. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I like like a fucked up snack every once in a while. Uh-huh. I like to grow, like it's not good at all. I don't enjoy eating them, but sometimes I just like to punish myself. Is it, so is it so no baby, just baby food? It's like, it's the little uh, pouches. The packets, the little yeah, you just pouches. squeeze them in the gas. Yeah, dude. it's like fucked up flavors like banana and beets. Are you getting like the good ones? Because they're kind of expensive. Yeah, I like to ball out on, a, on certain items. On some ba- you ball out on some baby food. Yeah. You eat snacks like Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they fed RoboCop. I'll tell you right now, dude, when, I, when my son was a baby and I would get really high, I would just tear through his baby food. You tear <laughs> through it? Tear through it, dude. Just twist off the top. Oh, dude, you yeah. just got fucking, you got mashed sweet potato on your cheeks. <laughs> I did it again, B. It <laughs> happened again. 
<laughs> oh, you're hungry? Too bad you're a stupid baby. <laughs> yeah. You should have got to the first idiot. Food. You gotta want it more than the next guy. Dude, all the time. Dude, honestly, maybe my favorite high snack is just simply some like fucking like you're, it's always like oh, it's a delicious fruit and a shitty vegetable. They always throw a shitty vegetable. So pear, like, pear kale. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like my orange spinach baby pouch. <laughs> And that was I want dope. one right now. Yeah. They go by so fast, too. Like, you don't even get to enjoy it if it was good. It's just in and out. Sometimes I'll pocket it like it's a Zin pouch. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Baby food. Ali Makovsky, it is such an honor to see you perform up Thanks here. It's so, so great to Thank see you, you return. A legend in the Kill Tony universe. Someone that's going to be a comedian for the rest of their damn lives. How about a hand for the great Ali Mikofsky, everybody? All right, back to the bucket we go. We're fucking doing this. How many of you guys like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? Animals. Ruthless. Those lights got brighter, huh? Okie dokie. All right, we actually know this next young man. He's been on this show before. A very funny man from Austin, Texas. Make some noise for Adam Lucky, everybody. Adam Lucky. I saw him earlier. He's a real guy. He's going to come up with a brand new minute. He's going to get through it uninterrupted. Any fucking second now. He might be in a this Oregon doesn't prison right now. This doesn't feel lucky. Okie dokie. Uh, like Adam we have new lucky. You see anything? There you go. Perfect. Back. That's how it works. If they miss their spot, they fucking miss their spot. Your next comedian goes by the name of Jonah Campos, everybody. Jonah Campos. Welcome to Showbiz, people. You get your name pulled out of that bucket, you better be there. Jonah Campos. Jonah. We see any movement over there? Jonah? More like Joe No. <laughs> More like. We know which two bucket poles are fucking each other in the men's room right now. <laughs> Who's this? Is this Jonah? Really? Okay. Jonah Campos. Um, he's in the Navy. Um, he just got back from deployment, so I'm pretty sure that I have chlamydia right now. <laughs> um, I like dirty sex. And <laughs> So, I like getting fingered in the ass sometimes. <laughs> and I know my boyfriend doesn't know this, but I know that he wipes his fingers in my hair after... <laughs> Stop you right there. I hope you're done. Uh, that was incredible. You're Jonah Campos? Yes, sir. That's your name? Yeah, Jonah. Okay, Jonah. Very good. You're shaking right now. Yeah. Uh, is this your first time performing? This is my second time. Second time ever performing. Dude, both of those jokes were great jokes. Yeah. That was legitimately really good. Why are you so nervous? You should be happy. You should be excited. Dude, it rules to be a cute chick. <laughs> Everyone was so on your... If you were just a schlub shithead dude, 
and then went up there and just started like shaking. Larry would be like, ah, this fucking jerk off, jerk off, jerk off. She came over and she was like this, and everyone's like, you're gonna do so. I already, I already want to laugh. It's so true. You just see, once you see a girl up there shaking, everyone in the crowd went, we all must protect her. Yeah. yeah. She's like, sorry, but you have to fight a bunch of video game bosses to win me. <laughs> it is wild. No, she's like, if she's like a skank fest, then she's hot. She's like, she's trembling, which is even hotter, in my opinion. Yeah. I love her trembling. She is. She is Did Lewis like, rape you when you're here confronting your attack? <laughs> She goes, I told you I was brave, you son of a bitch. Yeah. You told me I would never have the balls. It is incredible. Right. Lou's like, I love this girl. Hot, trembling, and within reaching distance. Yeah. It's all I need. No one knows where she's at. No one's looking for her. Hot and trembling. You are Michael J. Foxy. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long week, we barely have any left. Uh, <laughs> so Jonah, let's talk about it. What's it like having the name Jonah and being like how you are? That's an interesting one, right? Yeah, I get asked if I'm a transgender. Uh-huh. And what do you say to that question? No, no. <laughs> oh, dude, if I, if I found out she had a dick right now, she'd be going to Jamaica next week. <laughs> I'd be here, though, dude. Lewis hey, Jonah. Is like, Lewis is like, I like a finger in my ass, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jonah, let's talk about it. Where the fuck are you from? I'm from California, unfortunately. California. Absolutely. What part? Orange County. Orange County. No, no doubt. Um, what do you do for work? What fucking video store do you work at? What's going on here? <laughs> Last blockbuster do you fucking work at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a perfect fucking description. Yeah. What 7-Eleven do you work overnights at? Let me know if you need any help. <laughs> yeah. You got any movie recommendations? Shining is every... Um, I work in dietary for a, like a retirement home. Oh, okay. All right. Hell yeah. Dietary in the retirement home. We've seen this porno before, no doubt about it. Um, what do you like to do for fun, Jonah Campos? Um. Get your asshole fingered. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I mean. We... Run. <laughs> it's like, I like the job. She's like, well, I'm currently thinking about going to prison in Oregon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was, I read, I do yoga, but mostly I like to stand in place and shake. Uh, I'm in the Quake community. Oh, you guys aren't Quakers? Oh, sorry. I guess Vegas hasn't got the new fad yet. You guys must not be TikTokers. Um, Go ahead. I play clarinet. That's what I like. How did you end up here? I love Legion of Skinks. Oh, fuck yeah. I think, we know that. I think what Red Band's asking, I think you're giving off, like, hitchhiker energies right now. I think Red Band's literally asking, like, how did you get here? I took a plane by myself. Aww. <laughs> Can you believe this is the girl that doesn't eat baby food? I mean, this is incredible. This is insane. <laughs> I took an airplane all by myself. When... when I mean, a, se a series of five truckers got me here. <laughs> Only three of them took what they wanted. When the way she shook through saying I took a plane by myself, it sounds like she was the only one on that plane. Like, and it you, also did you fly it? Were you? <laughs> no, she was saying it like I was a big girl this weekend. <laughs> I yeah. got on a plane. I feel like you had one of those like flight attendants that had to like take over for your parents that walked you to the airport. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> they got to deliver you to your aunt in Florida. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? I'm 22. 22. Hot. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. So an abortion would ruin shit, everything dude. forever. Whatever, dude. She's fucking dude. I'm like, dude. Am I crazy? How hot is it that she's trembling right now? It's the best. Your fear 
Look attracts me. Look at her leg. It's like she's trying to turn me on. She's shaking her thigh at me. Hell yeah. Like Why her... are you making Lewis want you? <laughs> What's Remember? wrong with you? I think it was what, it was a, a superheroes movie, or was it in that show Heroes? Remember when there was a villain who was made stronger by your fear? That's what you're doing to Lewis right now. If you if you just get it together, he's powerless over you. But no, stop shaking. Yeah, he's gonna keep talking until you drop down and hug his leg. <laughs> I'll keep you Lewis. safe, Jonah. Lewis is in love. He's like, stop it's... shaking. You did a great job. You yeah, killed you it. it. You fucking yeah. be happy. If, if, if I was this anxious about being on stage, there was no way I would ever go on stage. <laughs> yeah, it seems Lewis like it'd be a pretty big fucking rush. It seems like it'd be pretty exciting, huh? How do you feel right now? Um, I'm dissociating. <laughs> you're funny. Do people, like, tell you that you're funny in Orange Sheesh. County? Do people in the retirement home and stuff that you work at, do they, like, tell you you're funny and shit? Yo, I felt Lewis is moving, for sure. <laughs> he says they have a boner. We were kind of joking, but I felt it, and it's definitely changing. Well, I mean, Tony just asked her how she's feeling right now. She's killing in front of this huge show, and her answer was the answer of how you'd feel when you're getting raped. No, and dude. I, was, I'm, I like it. I'm, I'm starting to above myself. I'm with Lewis. I'm starting to think it's sultry. You're like, how you feeling about how you did? And she's like, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty sticky about it. <laughs> You are incredibly <laughs> funny. Uh, Orange County is only, I think, an hour and a half uh, drive from San Diego. How would you like to open Big J. Okerson's uh, New Year's Eve show? <laughs> Give her five minutes, Big J. Come on, I'll pay for it. 100 percent. She's in. That is an hour and a half drive. That is one trucker rape. <laughs> Close your eyes, grit down bare, you'll get through it. Read his farmer's almanac while he finishes on your back. Just disassociate. I mean, and you're going to get five uh, minutes. I don't mean to rain on this parade, but the opening spot isn't really Jay's to give away anymore. But if you want to open for that last guy who will be headlining the show. No, absolutely. Come to, I'm there that whole weekend. Please come through and hang out. Meet Kim Congdon and Jason Ellis, man. It's going to be a fun Jonah, week. I find it absolutely incredible that the episode that you make your debut on happens to be an episode in which we get Kim Congdon, who started at the age of 21, on the show, Ali Makovsky, who started at the age of 20. We're seeing you for the first time, your second time ever on stage at the age of 22, and you just got another gig out of it. Absolutely incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise one more time for Jordan Campos, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hey, here, take one of these. Can you catch? Here we go. Oh! Yeah! Jedi Knight. She was great, dude. I'd say outside shot. Me and her finger each other's assholes in San Diego, California. <laughs> How about one more time? Even I find that whole thing amazing. One more time for Jonah, everybody. I do this shit all the time. That was fucking... That was really genuine and interesting. Yeah. The fear makes it exciting. Uh, what do you think? Should we go to the bucket one more time, huh? fucking do it. We're having fun here tonight. Probably not going to be able to follow that kind of momentum, but let's try it anyway. Uh, make some noise for John Burns, everyone. Let's see what happens here. John Burns is next here, live on Hill Tony. Live from... This guy better be scared and hot. <laughs> here he comes, everybody. Make some noise for John Burns, everyone. Thank you, Lewis. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is John Burns. Come from a 
family of sheep farmers? No, we don't fuck the sheep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> came out here with my dad. We came out camping. Uh, came up to me one day. He said, uh, John, I just saw aliens. I just saw aliens. It wasn't aliens. It's just an interracial couple. <laughs> Uh, I've never served in the military. I've wanted to. Like, I've really wanted to serve in the military. I feel like it sometimes. Mainly because my wife fucks other guys. Uh... Did you have something else that you wanted to do? You I have, just, like, I, technically I had a stupid, you had 15 seconds left. I had a stupid one. I, I do this cute thing with my girlfriend. I, like, get on my back and I paw, uh, like, paw like a cat. And I'm like, meow, 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 meow. She calls me cute. She calls me a cat. Actually, a pussy faggot. She calls me a pussy faggot. Uh, never saw that one coming. One more time for... John Burns, everybody. Yes. John, welcome to the show. How's it going, my friend? John, over here, little buddy. How's it going? <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you? Good, dude. Awesome. Having how, a great time. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy for? Uh, this is my second time. First second time. time ever. Yeah, Look dude. Hell yeah. Isn't it crazy? You see the difference between natural talent and whatever that was? Isn't that amazing? I love it. Uh, so welcome to the show, John. Where in the farmland that you were talking about do you live? Uh, Santa Rosa, California. What's it called? San what? Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Okay, very good. And uh, you live out there, what? By yourself, with family? Uh, no, with my girlfriend. Okay, so you really don't have a wife? No, no, that was just jokes. Did you ever have a wife? No. Okay, so you have a girlfriend. How long have you been with her? Uh, four years. What do you do for work? Uh, now I'm a plumber's apprentice. A plumber's apprentice. What a shitty job. <laughs> yeah, my... <laughs> you watch a guy plumb? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A guy that hates me plumb. <laughs> this guy sees more crap than a Detroit police officer, you know what I'm saying? Stupid. Hold this bucket of shit for me, apprentice. <laughs> I have to change a pipe like a real plumber. Here, smell my plunger. That's Donald Trump's worst nightmare is being the host of a new show called The Plumber's Apprentice. <laughs> uh, John Burns, uh, you're a plumber's apprentice. You've been with the lady for four years. What does she do out there in the middle of nowhere? Uh, she's a banker. She's a what? A banker. A banker. Banker, works at a bank. Okay. I feel like these are all jobs in the game of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I run the grocery. <laughs> I am a policeman. <laughs> the interracial I'm couple together. Yes, Dave is a treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> the interracial couple joke. What did you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. I got confused for a second because some people laugh. I, I, I don't know. I just. I, I thought it was fine. I thought it was like you know, your dad's like an old racist. Yeah, I just. I like. Uh, I like thinking my dad's a big racist because he's a big Democrat. So I just. I call him a racist all the time. Oh yeah, that's the fucking Democrats <laughs> N word right there. <laughs> Very interesting. The Democrats N word is Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Still got it. Three days in, dude. Hell yeah, bro. Well, core values. So, John Burns, making your Kill Tony debut. Tell me, what is the most interesting thing do you think about your entire life? You ever save anybody's life? You have any special skills or talents? You ever win a trophy for anything? Tell you us. suck on baby food like a weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nothing. I'm pretty uninteresting, I guess. I agree. Uh, I did have sex with a girl and jump out of a two-story balcony hotel room. Wow. Okay, rewind. Yeah. That's... It was in uh, Mexico for senior trip. He's like, I'm gay. <laughs> no, it was a girl, not a guy. A girl, not a guy. Okie dokie. That kills in Santa Rosa. 
Dude, I can't tell you the most the craziest thing about you is what you do to your water bottle. What the fuck is going on? Dude, what? Guy, oh these... my god, what'd you do? Let the last comedian hold on to it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She had palsy hands. <laughs> so can we hear about this two-story jump? So Let's right after you fucked this girl, yeah, you, you were like, there's no the time for elevators, man. Well, I was, I was just drunk, and I was having sex with her in the hotel room, and her dad walked in. Oh, and, my God. I mean, she later told me it was her dad. It, it could have been anybody. I was just running. And I You're ran. having sex with her in a hotel, and the dad walks in? Yes. Did what they, are you, you know, why, why do we live in a hotel? <laughs> well, yeah. I, and I didn't know what floor. I just j went out to the balcony and I jumped. So you didn't know who it was and you said, I'm willing to maybe die for this. Well, I wasn't going towards the door. Because the girl door. fucked you in her parents' family the story hotel is, room? The story, is a, the story is a fucking lie. It might be. It's a fabrication. I'm watching it might be bullshit. He's bullshitting us right now. He had no interesting story. And oh, right that, my I like that story. I, I, mean, I like that when it was the subject of a movie called Summer Resort with Rob Morrow and jo <laughs> young Johnny Depp. So did the dad... What happened? Tell, tell, us about you, tell us about when you met the girl and you had to lower your sunglasses. What? Yes, I don't really have that many interesting stories. I guess there was this one time that I shot a helicopter with an anti-ballistic <laughs> missile. But... If you want me to tell that old thing. Yeah, well, I live in a small town, and uh, Russians dropped down on parachutes, took the place over, and then uh, me and my friends started like a young, cool fucking group called the Wolverines, and we... <laughs> I want to go back to this story. I gotta, I gotta slow it down for a second and get back to the actual fucking story. So you meet this girl that night? Uh, yeah, I was Did down... she tell you that her dad might be coming back at any moment? Well, no, she told me later that it was her dad. But I, I, I just, I just okay, say so. It wasn't her dad, by the way. Yeah, was she just in sharing a hotel room with her dad, or was her whole family? It was there? just a guy. I mean, I. Yeah. Where did you meet this girl at? Uh, the resort. You just met her there. Where? At a bar? At like a pool party, and then we later went to the beach, and just, that's where. If we... you can think back, did she say it was her dad or her daddy? <laughs> the story isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, anyway, I had to leave because I had ninja class in the morning. <laughs> so you're having sex with a girl. What's the position? You in missionary, doggy style? What's happening? I was, yeah, I was her laying on the bed and me on the end of the We're bed. We're going to break her. This is a lie or not. The story's kind of falling apart this, right now. He's like missionary, doggy. It was a uh, combo with the two. Uh, was, uh, hey, uh, look, I'm very good at reading people. I'm telling you right now, something doesn't add up about this story. I'll be, when Tony said, was it missionary doggy style? And he went, yep. <laughs> that made me agree with Old you. missionary oh. doggy. <laughs> yeah, I'm plain old, plain old missionary doggy. All right, well, I don't really care about the story anymore, John. But well, where'd you land? What's that? When you jumped out of the balcony, where'd you land? Bushes? Uh, like bushes. Like every uh, hotel. It was a Mexican resort, so like every hotel was the same. So that's why I thought I could just go to the balcony and jump off and run on the plants. And you but did? it was a bush. Right. Oh, God. After well, manicured because you were in Mexico. <laughs> John Burns, thank you for making your Kill Tony debut his second time ever on stage. Here's a little joke book, John. Can you catch? Thank you, guys. Wow, there he goes. The water bottle got a little more crumbled up on that one. All right, I mean, this is normally where we could end the show, but I don't know. What do you think? Should we do one more bucket pull real quick? All right, let's see what happens here. We're the in the overtime. It. Thank you all for hanging out. And how about one more time for my friends, the Legion of Skanks, fucking here. Throwing the greatest goddamn party on planet Earth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your, what appears to be your final bucket pull of the night. She goes by the name of Jill Carlson. Here we go. Time to put a ribbon on this fucking amazing present. Jill Carlson is, I'm sure, coming. Indeed. Here she comes. Make some noise for Jill, everybody. Come on. Hello, thank you. Hi guys, how's it going?
going? I just wanted to thank you. I invested in gold bond powder before this week, and y'all fuckers made me rich. Thank you so much. So, um, a lot of people think I'm a lesbian, and I'm not. I, I have a type. Some of you guys match with me. Fat, bald losers without driver's licenses. Hi, I'm here. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm 40, I'm still single, and so maybe I am gay. So I decided to match with a woman on Tinder. She was a Buddhist lesbian. And I was like, that's nice, she's peaceful. Um, but then she started writing to me. And ladies, have you seen the fucking paragraphs we write to men? God damn, they're so fucking long. Then she started sending me emojis, and it was like, lightning bolt, Bulgarian flag, broken heart. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to say to me, bitch. So we went out to lunch, and she said, I want to take you to a Tibetan restaurant because I'm a Buddhist. She was white. She wasn't from Tibet, but she's like, let me show you the food of my people. Then she didn't talk the entire time. Just stuff non in her face. Thank you, ladies, for laughing. Fuck all you guys for not laughing. Ladies, thank you. But she sat there the entire date. She didn't say anything at the end. She took a deep breath, and she said, my energy does not have to match your energy. So I ghosted that bitch. Our energies match now, don't they? Thank you, guys. That's my time. That's my job. Jill Carlson. Thank you. Welcome Hello. to the show. Hello. Do you think people think that you're a lesbian because it looks like you like to eat out a lot? Maybe. Perhaps. I don't know. It could just be the fact that I, um, I don't, I, I just like to emasculate men. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. I love it, Jill. Thank uh, you. I feel like you have the energy of a woman's prisoner in Oregon. Uh, <laughs> Divorce lawyer, it's perfect. A really? Divorce lawyer, yes. You are? I am. You, you look like Big J when we first started the show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I had that care energy right through the fucking door. You gotta watch your old clips. Nah, dude. I like this chick. She has Vegas tits. It looks like. Thank you. You know, sometimes when I think of something in my mind, it makes me laugh, but I don't know if the audience will get it exactly. But the only way I can describe what I'm thinking, it looks like if she got a new tattoo on her titty. It would be faded already. <laughs> it's on my ass. It's right here. It's right here on my ass. That's the one. Oh, what is it? What's Whenever she gets a tattoo, it actually, it's actually it is a butterfly. But somebody asked me if it was too bunny. Oh my fucking. god! Mostly so butter, that, folks. It's mostly it's butter. There you down. go. Way to step on an actual joke. Good job, yes. Jill. Sorry. <laughs> it's a butterfly. Listen, I'm a killer and I'm a control freak. I apologize. I love it. What do you control other than a fork and a spoon? What the fuck are you talking about? Thank you. You don't control a... shit here. Yes. <laughs> you're, I am. You're on my pirate ship now, Jill. I am the producer of the Four Corners Comedy Festival. Whoa! <laughs> Name dropper! The, the what? Thank you. I can't believe it has four corners. Your festival seems like it would be round. Thank you very much. Shall we go further? I lost weight for you, asshole. Look at this. I Holy shit. <laughs> Where did you lose This it? is the after picture? <laughs> it is. It is. Thank you. I tried really hard to drink a shit ton of water before I came here. That's what you think losing weight is? I also took a lot of methamphetamines. But what? I love it. Water and... Uh, her parents go, we told her losing means gaining and gaining means losing. <laughs> Uh, tell us about your, your comedy festival. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be... Like, you're... I actually have uh, ran a comedy festival in Durango, Colorado. And it's been... Uh, we just had our fifth year. Adam Dominguez from Las Vegas. And Irma Ruiz, who was on Kill Tony, um, were my headliners. And I actually produce shows here in Las Vegas, including a show called Toxic Femininity. All right, which all is right, a female all right. Show. That's enough. Jesus. Oh Sounds God. awesome. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you called me last. Dude, how is your personality less hot than your physicality? <laughs> It is incredible. Because I worked very hard to cultivate it, sir. Jill, Jill, you don't need to answer rhetorical questions. Uh, so you live in Colorado? Um, I actually am moving to Phoenix and Vegas to do stuff starting November 7th. I'm going to do comedy shows. Okay, so you live in Colorado? I'm actually kind of like nomadic, homeless right now between scenes. Do oh, comedy production. Fuck, you're unbearable, Jill. People. Jesus Christ, this is my arch nemesis right here. Dude, I don't know what happened. Uh, Tony, tell her she doesn't have to answer rhetorical questions. That's really. He just answers a goofy question. She goes, well, funny thing. I, uh. <laughs> Oh my god. Are you really homeless if you're built like a house? Actually... Thank you. Kill Tony. Live. It's Skank Las 
Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Jill, very much fun. I love Thank people you. of all different... I did not know that this was like the Marvel Universe for Incel Comics, but I figured it out at the end of the weekend. So, thank you guys very much. Hi, hey, 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 I didn't get it. Hey, if I'm going to go out on say? a bitchy note, I'm going to go out fucking bombing. Thank you, Kill Tony. Have a great night. All right. I don't know what... I have no idea what she said there at the end. Something about Incel Comics. It sounded like it could have been mean, but I'm just going to let her go. No joke book for you, big or small. There she goes. When it's over, it's over, Jill. That's it. I said I just book my own shows. Thanks, Tony. Have there a you go. Absolutely. Book your own shows that nobody wants to go to, Jill. There you go. Okay. It's crazy. Literally, any of you can book your own shows at any period. It just depends no, on totally, who totally. shows up to the show. She was a good sport. Yeah, and, sport... That, and that sport is football. <laughs> Sorry, she was up here for like 10 minutes, guys. She got hangry. <laughs> <laughs> fat on fat crime. Rat -a -tat 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 -tat. I know all the good ones. <laughs> Come on, people are all different styles. How about one? she had the courage to sign up? How about one more time for Chill Carlson? <laughs> Right. She had the courage to sign up for this 10 minute of walk up. <laughs> the whole thing was brave. We had one girl that had the shakes and one girl that had the milkshakes. <laughs> I just can't stand it when people talk over the guests and answer rhetorical questions. So if you're wondering where this anger comes from, it's very simple. <laughs> Uh, well, there's only one way to end an episode like this, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as some of you may know, I'm sure some of you were at the first show. I'm sure some of you took a smoke break at some point, and you probably caught the unrecognized, the very, very recognizable face of your next comedian, who is an absolute legend on this show. You've seen a few of the regulars here tonight. This guy has done more new minutes on this show than any other comedian ever. He is the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine. Here's another new one by the great William Montgomery. Y'all better have fun tonight. Apparently most of the bodies they're finding in Lake Mead are shitty comics. <laughs> like that last bitch. What the fuck happened there? I swear if Taylor Swift writes another breakup song about us, I'm gonna fucking lose it. <laughs> Two songs was the limit, now three. Taylor, get over me already. I didn't want to say this, but Taylor actually used to do blackface in the bedroom. <laughs> Granted, it was my fetish, but she was into it. <laughs> she used to make me call her Lawrence Taylor Swift. Since the movie gives no other clues, Shrek likely rejects the teachings of Jesus and he's in hell in the DreamWorks universe. <laughs> okay, I thought the Shrek... <laughs> I'm the teacher that promised that pizza party! That's another one I'm trying to do one earlier. I'm just trying to figure out who that is. I shouldn't have... It's Denzel Washington, maybe, as a teacher. Okay, that's it. That's all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the big red machine, William Montgomery, strikes again. William, how do you feel? Well, I'm feeling a little miffed right now. Uh, Lewis, why didn't I get a fucking welcome bag when I got up here? Why was I not on any of the things saying I would be here? I swear to God, it was in the fucking contract. 
that my name would be on the fucking flyer. It was not, I haven't even received a welcome bag yet, Lewis. Do you have anything you want to say to me? Do you want to apologize? It What's is true, going on? Lewis. I, I'm, I'm fucking pissed right now, Lewis. It's fucked up! Look. It's fucked up! <laughs> William, we don't normally, uh, I don't normally apologize for things, but I'll tell you right now, egg on my face, I am sorry. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Aww, look at that. The big red machine hugging the medium brown machine. Incredible. The rattlesnake and the vanilla gorilla. That could have gone one of two ways, but I never saw that being the outcome. I, I did not think they were about to hug. What the, the fuck is that? But no, hold on. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Um, what do you mean one of two ways? But you're right. Let me let me make myself clear. I'm serious. What were you talking about? Hey, dude, listen. I don't want any problems. Let me try to explain myself. I thought Lewis was going to beat the shit out of you on this stage. But then he hugged you, and that was pretty cool. I know. That was sweet. Now, look, William, that so you guys know William was, I mean, we've been doing this festival for a long time. Kill Tony, you guys are our fucking West Coast brothers, and they're not fucking Austin faggots. He's a West Coast faggot. Okay? <laughs> Way better. Uh, no, I'm not anymore. <laughs> no, I don't give a shit what you say about us. You're still my West Coast faggot, okay? I guess. All right. And I mean, we... you don't speak very highly of Los Angeles. So. Well, Los Angeles kind of sticks, but you were like a shining light in Los Angeles. Austin's way worse. Austin's fucking horrible. God damn it. Oh, you're crazy, but it's okay. Dude, I'll let you uh, say it. You're wrong so often that I'll just let you say that, and we'll play it back later. Austin is two streets of homeless people trying to stab you. Well... If you've been there in the last few no, months, wait, less homeless second. people. Are you really going to talk to Tony like that? <laughs> I was in Philadelphia with Tony. I was in Boston with Tony. We were eating ecstasy. Well, I told I got you. trapped in a bathroom. That's true. I literally got trapped in a fucking bathroom for three fucking hours in that hotel room. Tony finally got me out. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. He somehow jingled something with the fucking like doorknob. I don't know what you did, Tony, but that was a life-saving move. Absolutely. William, I, am, what, I apologize earlier if this is a weird question, but I think you look fantastic, number one. But did you lose a bunch of weight, or do I just think you're supposed to be fat? I did. No, no, no. I'll tell you what happened. Unlike the last comedian, he actually lost a bunch of weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look great, dude. Yeah, what a stupid uh, fat bitch uh, uh, he was. <laughs> I swear but to yeah, God. No, I, can, I can actually almost, I can now see my penis. And it, I swear to God, it has yes. been 10 years. I can almost see it now. If I suck in my stomach a little bit, I can see it. Or as I call it, the little red machine. <laughs> what kind Tony of, saw it in the bathroom. What kind of penis do you have, William? I haven't actually <laughs> seen it. Describe it for these people. If we... if. If someone were to pants you right now, what would we see? Does the curtains match the drapes? Is yeah. there red hair on the sides of it and not on the top? It's a lot. It's a lot of purple. It's a lot of the color purple. My penis. I got that's in how, this weird. That's that's how funny I thought it was, lady. I'm like, what? Nothing. I picture the bush. All right. Hair. Like, shut on, up, a lot bitch. of red hair shut hanging up. from the balls. I see you right now. You have to shut up, bitch. I swear to God, I haven't slept in three fucking days. I literally got trapped in another fucking bathroom 20 minutes before I got on stage. What did you say? I can hear you, bitch! Did my friend... Go right for my trap. Did my friend happen to make it here by any chance? My one buddy? No. All right. That would have been sweet. Is Tyler here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what that was, but that was the saddest thing I've ever seen in no, my it's life. Okay. It's like it's so, so Any chance my dad popped through to watch this show tonight? No? It no, he didn't? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Hey, did, uh, did Thomas Hinchcliffe check in? <laughs> Whatever, it was no. still a good festival. It doesn't matter. Okay. It was. It was perfect. I was going to have Nate Diaz come up here and smack William Montgomery, but... <laughs> Maybe another day.
And maybe another day, maybe the 10 year anniversary episode or something like you that. You really plan that out, Tony? No, not exactly a plan. <laughs> Any, everything with Nate is very loosely planned. <laughs> but yeah, we're friends from the old gay state of California, you retard Lewis. <laughs> Dude, I will beat up anybody from California. <laughs> anybody. Woo! I have no respect for the state. Oh my god. Man. But they have to fight in winter coats. Did you fight? What's his name here? No, no, me and Ellis are fighting April 8th. April 8th? April 8th. Where's that at? Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Wow, okay. Lewis just uh, close, made the odds closer now because he's now also taking it up the ass. He really is. I've seen the videos. Have y'all seen these videos? <laughs> William. Okay. It's Montgomery, been a long week. you are a fucking legend on the show. This is the end of this episode. I want you to look out at these people and put a ribbon on this thing for everybody. Look out there and give your own closing fucking statement for this episode. To these, these are some of the best fucking comedy fans on planet Earth. You've written more minutes than anybody. I didn't plan this, but I'm going to force you to improvise right now. Put a little ribbon on this episode for us, William. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart everyone coming here. I swear to God, a couple days ago, I thought I was about to not be able to breathe anymore. I was literally trapped in this bathroom. <laughs> The door to like the bathroom, I swear to God, it was like this really hard floor and the door had like the suction thing. I swear to God, I was running out of air. Tony busted through. I was trapped in the fucking bathroom earlier here. I made it out, so thank you all so much for making it out. William Montgomery! Come on, people, one more time for William. I know you've been cheering all weekend. We're all losing our voices, but we got here today. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it again. How loud can this place get for our friends, the great legion of skanks? Motherfucking Brian Redman, the guy that invented podcasting. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you at the next whatever. We love you. Love you. Good night. Fuck yeah.